So Danny Ainge retires. Brad Stevens replaces him as president of basketball operations. How are we feeling about that? I miss Danny. Not gonna Tr- lie. Trader Danny goes becomes Trader Brad. I think Brad is just Brad was done coaching, as he as was said. He had no motivation to coach anymore. Well, Which is understand why, you know. Like I don't I don't This is Coaching the Celtics with that team was probably one of the most frustrating things for him because they had talent, but they didn't have the bench, and players didn't live up to expectations. Mainly Kemba, and like he's too smart. He he's too smart of a basketball mind to just let go. Like yeah. if we were to let him go, he would get scooped up in half a second. Any team with a coach opening, he's immediately the best coach in the market. Yeah, he just maybe wasn't for our team. And so, what better way? He knows our team more than anybody else. And, and so thing- now he's going to be making decisions with the help of like a Mike Zarin and an Austin Ainge, who have worked with Danny and know Mike Zarin's a genius as far as like cap manipulation and all that. He's known for that. And so he's probably going to do a lot of the work. Brad's going to make the personnel decisions and say, okay, who works well here, here, and here. So I think it's going to work very well. It's just a matter of how much balls Danny. I mean, Brad I has. He, I don't think he has. I don't think he's going to make that big trade. I don't think he's going to make that big trade. Oh, I think Brad has a plan. Because, I think Brad has a plan. Because you why, have, why would you think you that? You have to think of it like this, Brandon. He's able to design the team how he wants it now. He could have gone to Danny about, like, say, like, he wants to try and trade for this player or sign this player. Danny could have been like, no. He can make those decisions now for himself. For there the was a part. disagreement on something. I'm trying to think of a talk topic. Like there was a big disagreement on that roster. Because <laughs> Danny can make the roster how he wants it now. Yeah. And he can probably, if they sign a coach, say like they just sign like a random coach, he can tell him how he wants the team to be played. Because that, the GM has so much power over stuff like that. 100%, but like, I don't know. I just don't think... He's got the chops to make that big move that, I mean, Danny really didn't have the chops to make. I mean, for years we talked about Danny having a million first-round picks and trading for Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, but he never did it. Danny. Those were never realistic, though. Yes, Why wouldn't it be realistic? That. We had. The thing is, is anybody really complaining options. about not trading Jalen Brown for co- one year of Kawhi Leonard? If you, win a, if you win a ring like the Raptors did, I would never complain. I would not complain at all. I would. I would mm-hmm. rather... I would rather have Jalen Brown for most of his career than just one year of Kawhi where you get one championship and then you live with that for the rest of your life saying, oh, well, we did win that one. You want, you want to set your team up to the point where you can win, but you also want to set it up to the point where you can win just more than one. But you don't want to be a fucking one and done team. One's enough for Toronto. Yeah. One's not enough for us. Who says we're going to win a ring with Jalen? Our team's not... Good right now. We need some, but we need a third star for a reason. The two guys aren't getting it done. Yeah, and if you're trading Jalen, you're back to two stars. If you're trading Jalen, it better be for a Dame Lillard. That's a Kyrie too. It better be for a Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard is so much better than Kyrie. It's not funny. No, I'm saying when we had Kyrie, we would have traded Jalen for Kawhi. Yeah, and that still would have been one year of Kawhi. And we win a ring that we 100% win a ring that year. 